Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel and this time we'll take a look at KIND which is Kubernetes in Docker that you can run on your local computer and how to get a public IP for your Kubernetes services using Inlet's operator. And before we start, of course, Happy New Year to everyone and let's hope this year is a bit better than the previous one. So let's get started and take a look at what we are going to do. So what we'll do in this video is we will install uh, Kind, which is uh, Kubernetes in Docker. Uh, and I'm installing this on my laptop, which is running Windows 10, but also Windows Subsystem for Linux 2.0. But by the way, this should work on Mac and on a, a Linux system as well. So we'll run Kind um, on our machine. And then we will install the Inlets operator uh, in Kind. Now, what does the inlets operator do? It basically allows us to establish a tunnel from our local machine to a virtual machine in the cloud. And in this case, we'll just use DigitalOcean as an example. We can use other cloud providers as well. So this droplet or this virtual machine has a public IP. And what we can do is we can actually take requests on this public IP and forward them to our cluster. So for example, if you're running an application that is exposing a web interface, for instance, on your local kind cluster, you can browse to that web interface using the public IP of the droplet. And you'll see that it is very easy to configure. So let's get started and take a look how it works. The first thing that you'll need is, of course, kind. On the kind website, you can find a quick start and the quick start will tell you how you can install kind and then create a cluster. Now, there are many options uh, that kind provides. We'll just use the basic options here. Now, the installation, if you can just uh, move over to that on Linux, which of course also includes WSL, uh, the installation is very simple. It's just a single executable called kind that you can download with curl. And then of course you make sure you can execute that executable and then you move it somewhere in your path. Now I typically use brew on Linux as well. Uh, so for those that have installed brew, you just use brew install kind and you can use that same command on macOS if you've installed homebrew on macOS as well. So it runs on yeah, different kinds of systems, including Windows if you want to. So that's the first thing we have to install kind first. Of course, kind stands for Kubernetes in Docker. So you have to make sure that Docker is running on your system as well. And if you're using WSL version two, you also make sure you integrate the Docker installation with the WSL installation. You can find online how that works. And by the way, kind also on their website provide a tutorial or information on how to use it together with WSL2. So once kind is installed, you should have the kind executable on your system. So if you run kind, you get the help information. And what we want here is to create a cluster. So the kind create command that you'll see here is available uh, for that. Okay, let's just clear the screen and let's do kind create cluster. Now, if I would run this command, I would basically get a one node Kubernetes cluster uh, running as a Docker container on my system. Now you can provide additional information with the config flag. In that case, you have to provide a YAML file. So for instance, and I have one here available, if you create a config file, a YAML file that looks like this, uh, where you specify that you want one control plane node and then two worker nodes, well, then you can just do that. If you need that, if you want to try out a multiple node configuration, you just supply this configuration. But it's entirely optional uh, to do so. So let's clear this uh, again. And let's just do kind create cluster. And when I run this command, of course, we run Kubernetes as Docker containers we need to have a Docker image first. You see that there, the reference to the image is kindest slash node and then the version of Kubernetes. 
What he's now doing is pairing the Kubernetes um, deployment with Docker on the system. So we'll give it some time to finish. Great, that's now created. And what the command has done, if you have kubectl already installed on your system, and remember kubectl or kubectl is the uh, Kubernetes administration tool, then automatically you will be connected to the kind cluster using that tool. Now I have aliased kubectl 2k. So if I'm running the uh, k uh, cluster info command that you see there above, I would get indeed cluster information. Now what I will do is I will just do kind get node to see how many nodes I have. And in this case, because I didn't pass extra config information, I only have one Kubernetes node running as a Docker container on my system. I could do k get ns to get the namespaces and there are all the namespaces that uh, were created in this in this kind cluster. So that's it. The kind cluster is created. We can now go ahead and install the inlets operator on this cluster. Before we install the inlets operator, you can of course check out the project on uh, GitHub. So I'm here on the uh, on the inlets uh, pages. So inlets is a cloud native tunnel written in uh, Go. And of course, uh, if you read through this, you'll find all the information about what it's doing. So you have an inlets client and an inlet server, and you basically create a, a tunnel between those two. Now, of course, I want to use this together with Kubernetes, and that's where the inlets operator uh, comes in. So that's basically another project that enables you to use inlets with uh, Kubernetes. And you'll find a link on, on the page here as well. Here it is, inlets operator. If I click on that, you'll find the inlets operator project with all the information about what inlets operator is doing and what its uses uh, are. Now to install the inlets operator, I'm going to use yet another tool that makes it easy to do so. So the creator of inlets operator also created a tool called Arcade. And if you go to GitHub and you search for Arcade, you'll land on this page over here. So what you need to make sure of is that you install Arcade on your uh, system if you want to follow along, which is quite easy to do. You just use curl to get it and then it's basically installed on your system. So I'll leave that to you. Now let's install Inlets Operator with Arcade. Okay, so we finally are here to install the inlets operator. Now, the first thing I need is, of course, uh, I need an access token to DigitalOcean because remember, we are going to create a droplet or a virtual machine uh, on DigitalOcean. That means we need the access rights to do so. So I have in my uh, home folder here, I have a file which contains my DigitalOcean token. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export that um, that uh, token as AT and I'm going to indeed specify that it's in my home uh, folder. So dollar home slash DO token. So that creates an environment variable called AT that contains the digital ocean token because the inlets operator needs that to create the server side of the inlets tunnel. Now we can use Arcade to install the inlets operator. So let's use uh, Arcade install. Basically Arcade is a wrapper around Helm, so you don't have to use Helm to install all these tools. And it of course has support for inlets operator built in logically. Uh, so I'm going to indeed say I want to install the inlets operator. The provider is going to be DigitalOcean. So it supports several providers. Azure is also one of the supported providers. In this case, I'm using DigitalOcean just as an example. We're going to use the region, which is closest to myself, which is Amsterdam. And I think I have to use AMS3 in this case, because the other ones are not available for use. And then, of course, I need to specify the token file. So the token file is our environment variable in the uh, in AT. So let's do that. Let's do the installation. 
which is now happening. And as you can see, actually, if you have worked with Helm before, uh, you'll see it basically installing a Helm uh, chart here. Good, let's clear this out. Let's do k get ns. Let's take a look where is the inlets operator. So if we do k get pods in the default namespace, the inlets operator will be seen running there. Of course, you can specify another namespace to run in. I'm just running with the defaults uh, over here. Great, now we can deploy an application to the cluster with a service of type load balancer. Now I use the GitHub Action and a uh, local GitHub Actions runner on my machine, and it just ran the job called deploy. Now that job does nothing more than deploying some YAML to the kind cluster. I could have just used, of course, Quebec to uh, apply minus F to do so. Now, what you'll see here is that we have a namespace that we create, a namespace called MyMSI. And then we have a very simple deployment that basically exposes an HTTP endpoint uh, that returns nothing really, um, that we can use to verify if everything is working. Now, the application running in, the, in these pods is of course exposed via a service. And the important part here is that this service is of type load balancer because that is when the inlets operator will uh, kick in to do all the work to create the inlet tunnel, create a public IP and make sure all traffic, in this case on port 80 on that public IP, is forwarded to the pods running in the kind cluster that are running on port 8080. So this deployment was done. If we check uh, our local kind cluster and we do for example kget ns we'll see that we have a namespace called my msi so if i'm going to that my msi uh, namespace and we do kget all you'll see that i have a, a couple of uh, objects uh, over here of course my my deployment a couple of pods as well uh, but also a service. If you look at a service, type load balancer, as we discussed, it has a local IP, but it also has a public IP already. So this is actually the public IP of my digital ocean droplet running over there. Uh, the actual software that makes it all work and, and, and so on is here the tunnel client. This tunnel client, which was deployed by the inlets operator, is doing the work of, of, of establishing the tunnel to the server end at DigitalOcean. But all of these were created by the inlets operator. Now, if we go to the inlets operator, let's clear this out and let's do, let's just use K9S in this case. And I'm going to all namespaces. If I'm going to the logs of the inlets operator, uh, you will see in the logs, I'm just turning on word wrap here, and I'm going a bit up in the, uh, in the logs, you will see that um, there is some, there are some logs here that notify or that tell us, indeed you can see it here, that provisioning started with a provider, in this case, DigitalOcean, provisioning a host with DigitalOcean, and it takes some time to do the actual, to do the actual syncing, or it's syncing to see uh, what's going on. At a certain point in time, you have your IP address, right? You can see that here in the logs as well. So if anything is going wrong, if you don't get your IP address or uh, other issues uh, arise, be sure to look at the, at the logs of uh, the inlets operator to see what is going wrong there. Now let's get out of this and let's do a uh, curl command here just to see uh, if it all uh, works. And we'll go again to our uh, services here so I know what the IP address is. This is the IP address of our inlets operator, uh, sorry, of the inlets uh, tunnel at the, at the server end. Uh, let's clear this out. Let's do a curl and then uh, HTTP and then this IP address. And I have a um, groups endpoint here. So it's a, this is the endpoint HTTP. Normally it would list uh, resource groups in Azure, but because we're not running on Azure, there are no resource groups to be found. Uh, so in this case, this just returns, and I think it is the group set 
one yes <laughs> this one returns uh, nothing because basically empty uh, there are no groups to be uh, listed here but it's not a port of four that means there's an HTTP response coming from this uh, endpoint but it's basically running on my local machine we have come to the end of this video already uh, we took a look at the uh, inlets operator which is a great solution whenever you want to have a real public IP for uh, locally running Kubernetes services. So think about uh, Kind on your uh, on your laptop, on a desktop machine, at work, at home. It doesn't really matter. It provides you with this capability in a very simple way, as you have seen. If you have questions or remarks, do leave them in the comments. Hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye and take care.